So we just got done pouring the garage. So the house floor has probably been down there for 30 or 40 minutes since we've been done the house. And Luke just went down to check it. Not quite ready, still a little too wet. So we're gonna give it another 15, 20 minutes and we'll come back and check it again. All right, so it's been about a half hour since we checked it the first time. So we're gonna go down here and check it again, see what it feels like. Again, we started pouring up on this end where it's still a little bit in the shade, so that's probably not ready, but over there in the sun, it's gonna dry a lot faster. So the first thing we do to check it is we just press it with our fingers. That feels about ready to me. I can barely press in there, but it still feels a little moist on the surface. So that's just about ready to put the float machine on. That's still the first truck there. This is the second truck. Second truck's just a little bit softer, you can see that? So we still have a few minutes on that. The sun radiates off the wall, and that wall usually always dries really fast. So we're gonna have to keep an eye on that over there. All right guys, so this is how we drop the power trowel down inside a foundation with this crane on the back of the pickup truck. Um, it's definitely a lot better than, than dropping it down by hand or carrying it around to the other side on uneven gravel. So if you guys haven't got a crane like this, for you guys that do concrete floors and you know, you're constantly picking up the trowel and, and putting it down inside a basement, then you know, these cranes are awesome. So the, my goal with this video is just to help some of you guys learn about the timing of the concrete, when to start finishing, obviously, is the title. And that's probably one of the hardest things to do as a concrete finisher is learn about when the right time is to start. And like you saw in the beginning of the video, you just got to keep checking it. I mean, sometimes you can tell by looking at it how it's drying. You'll see the bleed water come up to the surface right after you get done pouring it and bull floating it. And then sometimes they don't even have bleed water, some of these floors we do. It just depends on the type of day it is. But if it does have bleed water, you know, when that st bleed water starts drying up, you got to start thinking about checking it, especially if it's in the sun like it is today. And then it ended up being really hot on this day. Um, I think it got up into the mid 80s to around 90 today. So that's why this thing dried so fast. But if you're new to this channel, you know, my name's Mike Day. I've been doing concrete for 40 years. I own my own business. Uh, at least Luke and Darren, these guys work for me. They're both really good concrete finishers. And my goal with the channel is just to help you guys learn about concrete. You know, learn about how to finish it, how to pour it, how to stamp concrete, how to stain it, all kinds of different things about concrete. So, you know, if you like that kind of stuff, then go ahead and subscribe. I put out a couple videos a week about different concrete things. And if you like this video, you can go ahead down there and smash that like button. I'd appreciate it. So as you can see, we got the trowels. We're dropping the trowels down. We got one drop down, and Luke's putting the other one down right after. And I'm getting on it right now. I can walk on it. As you can tell, when I pressed my fingers in, I was barely sinking in with my fingers. And my footprints, you know, I'm, I'm not sinking in much with my footprints. And I'm going up to that other end there. If you can remember early in the video, I said... The sun kind of radiating off that wall makes it really warm over there where Darren is on the skids. So it's actually drying over there a little quicker than it is over here by where we dropped the trowel down. What we're doing now is we're just floating it. We, As you, you can see, we put those float blades on top of the finish blades, and those are what we usually make the first pass with over the concrete. And those just help smooth it out a little more they help smooth out any humps or dips or any fill in any rock holes some guys use what's called a pan but we've always we've used pans in the past and those just that goes right on under the trowel and then the finished blades clip into it and that basically does the same thing as these float blades do just opens up the concrete and gets it ready for the finished blades you can see Darren's on the skids and he's getting all the edges going around the pipes with the skids and making sure everything's nice and flat and 
filled in and smooth around everything. He's, we're pretty fussy about our edges and going around our pipes. And then I'm over there just floating that part up that's drying the quickest. That's where we started. You know, we didn't start pouring there. We started pouring up here on the Seine. And we finished up pouring over there. But because of the way the sun came up over the trees, that's just how it started drying for us or curing. Some of you guys, I know some of you guys hate it when I say drying, but what doesn't really matter. It dries, it cures, it, it's starting to get harder. So that's that's the only thing you need to know. So I'm just going around and I'm just hitting the parts of the concrete that feel the, the firmest under my feet right now. That's why I'm not doing the whole thing across there because this part is a little bit firmer than the part I'm not hitting up there by Luke. So I'll get make, make sure I get this part done first and then I'll go back up in there and get that part after. That just helps keep you ahead of the game so you don't get behind on these floors. That part up against the wall that's in the shade, that's that's nowhere near ready yet. So Darren's going to go up in there and smooth out those little marks I made there with the trowel. Now what I'm telling Darren is, hey, go ahead, you finish this up. I'm going to go up and check the garage. We poured the garage on this day too, so we got pretty big house and a good sized garage to finish so Darren and Luke are going to end up finishing this house floor and while I go up there and finish the garage so Luke's over there now hitting that part with the lay down blades the finish blades which are just a steel finish blade that's under the trowel and Darren still has those float blades on that little trowel and he's going to finish that one little section up then he's going to bring it off to the side stop it and take those float blades off and start using the finish blades with like Luke is. So I just wanted to show you this whole first hit. And then uh, again, the timing, you know, on a day like today where the sun's out, it's really dry, it's starting to get really hot. You know, one guy could probably finish this house floor by himself, like either Luke or Darren could probably do it by themselves. But since there's three of us here, I mean, it's just a little easier, a little quicker if we put two guys down there on that floor and then one up on the garage. So that's why we got two down there today. Yeah, the first the first hit's all done now these guys are hitting it a second time you know sometimes you can wait in between hits depending on the temperature outside how fast the concrete's curing and sometimes you got to go right back over what you just hit you know 10 15 minutes ago to keep up with it that's how fast it cures in the sun and that was kind of what these guys had to do today they had to just keep hitting these spots piece by piece over and over again they were able to shut the power trials off a little bit in between passes but not for very long before this thing finished up we're going to make this basement floor really really smooth we'll shine it out or burn it out we call it both when it's done you can see they kind of follow a, a pattern when they're running the power trials and then the next time they go over that same area they cross that pattern by 90 degrees and that just helps keep the floor a little bit flatter a little bit more level you run the trials the same direction every single hit you'll create little waves in the floor you really notice it when you put a straight edge down on it or if you and a string across it and see the little waves. You can see I got the power trial up on the garage floor now and I'm starting to finish that one. These guys are pretty good about doing their edges. You know, they, they try to hit them almost every time they go around them with the power trial. 
so the edges look just as smooth as the area the power trial hit. Having, having pretty nasty looking edges but a really nice looking floor takes away from the whole thing. So this is the last pass. The floor is pretty rock hard now. It's just about done. Luke and I are snapping chalk lines where we're going to saw our expansion contraction joints. So we're taking our measurements and figuring out where this floor is most likely to crack. And then we're going to saw those joints. And then you can see the saw over off to the right over there. That's a hush varna soft cut saw. That's a Prowler 150. And it's made especially for cutting green concrete like this. So we don't have to come back the next day. We can get our saw cuts in the same day. So that thing will go, it takes a six and a half inch blade, so it'll cut down about a half inch and a half with a brand new blade. And that's plenty deep enough into a four inch floor like this to make the concrete crack right in the saw cut like that. So that's the timing on this, guys. I mean, learning how to start finishing, when to start finishing, when to get on concrete, that's the key. I got some more videos that are popping up here, so take a look at those. And I got another program coming up real soon called the Concrete Underground that I'm going to go into even more detail, but I'll, I'll bring the details out for that soon. That's going to be a private membership, so you'll be able to learn a lot more there. And uh, again, thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next video.